ASH 2015 coverage in Orlando, Florida. Thomas Baldrick joined now by Dr. Antonio Almeida, who's joining us from Portugal. Thanks for coming all the way here just to do this. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're looking at safety of lenalidomide. Why did you decide to do this study? Well, this was a very interesting observation that several investigators made, which was that when we used lenalidomide in patients with MDS, with Del5Q, there was clear hematological toxicity. But when in the same centers, a second study was done in patients without Del5Q, we noticed that the toxicity was less marked and less important. And so we proposed that we would amass all the data from all the lenalidomide in low-risk MDS studies to see if there was any difference in toxicity profiles between patients with deletion 5Q and patients without deletion 5Q. So we had seven studies altogether with over 400 patients uh, analyzed in all these studies. And what did you find? And what we found was that the patients with deletion 5Q have more toxicity, especially more hematological toxicity than patients without deletion 5Q. Now it is important to note that most of this toxicity occurs early on in the treatment and that mostly patients as they go on in the treatment start to become more tolerant and have less side effects. But, and the toxicity is mostly hematological, so the blood values go down initially and then recover. The patients with Del5Q have deeper uh, toxicity, deeper cytopenias than patients with normal karyotypes. So what does this tell you? Well, it probably has interesting implications in terms of the mechanism of action. We know that lenalidomide acts through several nuclear proteins in deletion 5Q which probably are not present in the mechanism of action in patients without deletion 5Q. So the mechanism of action in those patients may be different and act through different systems such as erythropoietin uh, receptors and erythropo erythropoietin stimulating um, pathways. So what would you do next with this? Or, or would you? Yes, now I think first of all we need to look at these toxicities and look at the responses and see if they have any correlation with responses. So from the clinical point of view, I think it is very important to establish correlation between the toxicities and the responses, dose interruptions, and dose and actual treatment discontinuations. But from the second point of view, I think from the mechanistic viewpoint, it is very important to try and understand how lenalidomide works in these two diseases and whether the mechanisms are actually different. And this may help us to add on treatments such as combined lenalidomide with erythropoietin which has been done to good effect and adding on different treatments depending on the mechanism of action may produce a more targeted therapy that helps patients more than just a single agent uh, treatment. Sounds like it could have a significant impact on patients. We hope so. It's certainly a very um, niche indication but this is a group of patients that has a great need for new therapies. If we look at low-risk MDS patients, almost all of them will become transfusion dependent. And the only really available therapy for them at the moment is erythropoietin. And once they lose response to erythropoietin, and almost all of them do after about one to two years, they become transfusion dependent and need new treatments to achieve transfusion independence, which improves quality of life, improves survival, reduces complications. And so if we can have a new treatment, whether it's in single agent or in combination, and the more we understand about the mechanism of action, the better we can use combinations, I think the more and more we'll be able to help these patients. Very good, sounds promising. Thanks so. for sharing your work with us, we appreciate it. Thank you.